It's time for the uh, Tulare, Planning, uh, Tulare County Planning Commission meeting. Uh, roll call, please. Gong. Here. Millie. Here. Elliot. Here. Diaz. Here. Whitlatch. Here. Kiliano, commissioner, is absent. She did notify us. Norman. Here. Aguilar. Here. Okay. Item two is a public comment. Uh, at this point. Oh, wait. Yeah, we, go. we forgot the roll call. <laughs> I mean, the Pledge of Allegiance, there, didn't we? All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> oh, they're all out there. Caucusing. Okay, now we can move on to item two, the public comment. At this time, the members of the public uh, may comment on any item not appearing on the agenda. Under state law, matters presented under this item cannot be discussed or acted upon uh, by the Planning Commission at this time. For items appearing on the agenda, the public will be invited to make comments at the time the item comes up for Planning Commission consideration. So that all interested parties have an opportunity to speak, any person addressing the Planning Commission uh, may be limited to the discretion of the chair. At all times, please use the microphone and state your name and address for the record. Is there anyone that would like to provide testimony to the Planning Commission that is not on the agenda today? Seeing none, we'll move on. Item three is approval of the minutes of uh, January 22nd, 2014. I wasn't here at the whole meeting, so I don't guess I can't approve the last part of the minutes. So. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes from January 22nd, 2014. I'll second it. Got a motion, a second. Roll call. Gong? Yes. Millie? Yes. Elliot? Abstain. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Abstain. Norman? Abstain. Aguilar? Yes. I guess we had enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Item four is a uh, continued public hearing. This is a special use permit PSP 10 0 Six zero Pixley Biogas LLC Pixley Biogas Anaerobic <laughs> Digester, and uh, Mr. Uh, Spada would like to speak first. Mr. Chairman, I have to recuse myself, so I will be uh, leaving the meeting. And do I do I need to stay for anything that's coming up at the end? Probably there won't be very much after after the public hearing today. So for those of you who saw me carrying in some uh, appearing to be drinks, cocktail drinks. Those aren't. That's Mr. Pink. It's a non-alcoholic drink. So <laughs> these guys are drinking them. It's not alcohol. So. Okay, I'm gone. Thank well, you. While we're are you doing that, we had uh, Commissioner Elliott Commer and Commissioner Norman uh, that were absent uh, on the last meeting. Uh, yeah, I had a chance to listen to the proceedings thanks to the fact that it's now online. It's very convenient to do, and I appreciate it. And I also apologize for apologize for my absence. I had a what's called a force hire in my workplace that I had to be there as mandatory overtime. I also listened to three exciting hours. Uh, <laughs> so, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Spada. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, <laughs> commissioners, uh, ladies and gentlemen. First, I want to thank you and compliment you for agreeing to have this special meeting. We think this special meeting uh, is pivotal. Uh, we believe also after you hear the um, staff report as well as uh, information from the applicant, um, interested parties and council that there may be a, a record on which uh, sound and reasonable action can be taken today. Let me just uh, outline briefly what uh, the process uh, is being recommended by staff today. After my very short introduction, I would like to turn it over to our Chief Environmental Planner, Hector Guerra, who will make some general comments with regard to the, um, the depth and um, solidity of the responses to comments, as well as a comment as to how the parties have really endeavored in good faith to bring to you together a package which is outstanding for your consideration. Then I would like to turn it over to uh, our senior planner, um, Aaron Bach, who will go through very meticulously as to how 
the proposed relocation site upon which there appears to be unanimous agreement by the applicant and interested parties how this alternative site complies with CEQA, one exception at the present time. Then what I'd like to recommend in order to facilitate this, I would like Mr. Chairman to be able to ask some questions of the applicant, a representative of CDI and their attorney so that certain facts can be put on the record so that staff can formulate an appropriate recommendation for today. And then um, you can question um, the, the, uh, the parties as you see fit and then you can engage in your deliberations. So with that, I would like to, with respect, turn it over to our Chief Environmental Planner, Hector Guerra. Good morning, Planning Commission members, members of the public. Welcome, everyone. Uh, Hector Guerra, Chief Environmental Planner, RMA Planning Branch. As Mr. Spada uh, preambled, uh, I will make a brief statement. Aaron Bach will then continue with the presentation and give you a little bit more depth and detail. Uh, included in your packet are our response to comments. Uh, they are very solid and very thorough, and I think if you look at a 76-page response, that tells the depth of detail that we went into to provide uh, the comments. Uh, the second item that Mr. Spotter raises is, is, is a really good point. The applicants were able to get together with uh, uh, the opposition, if you will, and they negotiated in good faith and, and were very amicable, very agreeable, and they've come up with a, what they feel is, is, a, is a solution. So uh, with that, we would compliment them. Thank you so much for, for letting us participate in that process too and, and, and working together. So uh, with that, uh, again, there was a very good faith effort. Uh, we have a lot of confidence in what they've accomplished and I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Bach now so he can continue with the presentation. Before Mr. Bach uh, continues, let me just say that uh, uh, Charlotte uh, Brasuez will be retiring uh, on the 1st of March and Aaron Bach will be stepping in as the acting chief planner. So it is with great confidence that we'd like to turn it over to Mr. Bach, who will walk you through the CEQA analysis for the relocation site. Thank you, Mr. Spada. <coughs> Supervisors, commissioners, sorry. Um, the, uh, He's promoting. thinking ahead. <laughs> um, as far as, uh, as Hector mentioned, uh, we have responded to all the comments in the record, and we have responded to all the comments in the record in the final environmental impact report. Um, <clears throat> as Dana can point out to you, uh, Velma, if you turn down the lights a little bit. As Dana can point out to you, the alternative site location is located on the JD High School site, and that's where an existing drainage pond is currently. Um, the plan is to move that to the north at this time um, to where the uh, digester was originally being proposed. Um, for the record, uh, <clears throat> CDI has committed to fund the new location and Pixley Biogas has committed to CDI uh, to move to this new location and a letter of intent has been drawn up for this alternative site. Now for Excuse the- me, and you have a, letter, a copy of that letter of intent before you as well as copy? Yeah. Um, the alternative site, as we have found, is feasible um, and it's been agreed to, as we stated, by Pixley Biogas as a feasible alternative site and uh, has um, substantially been analyzed under the existing uh, FEIR. Um, so any change to location does not substantially change our analysis in, in regards to the final EIR. The detention basin is a project feature um, that will be required to move to a new location as a condition uh, of this project and the uh, <clears throat> approval of which will be a, a ministerial uh, decision by the Public Works Department <clears throat> and uh, the construction impacts were already studied uh, for the digester at that location under the FEIR. Um, those construction impacts were found less than significant uh, with the mitigation measures, project features and conditions of approval that are already in your packet. Um, <clears throat> and because the JD High School site is already an existing industrial area, uh, the additional project feature being the relocation and proximity to the original site. The location does not change or require any additional CEQA analysis. Finally, although we have found this uh, alternative site feasible in uh, almost every way, 
um, and the applicant has placed a letter of intent in the record and is committed to locating at the new site, the applicant still does not necessarily have site control. This could be, could be potentially determined to mean under CEQA that the site is marginally considered to have economic feasibility as an alternative site under CEQA. Thank you. As a practical matter, that means unless the applicant has site control, then the project can't operate. However, we're convinced that we see a concerted effort in good faith to drive towards acquiring site control, whether it be in fee or a ground lease, and that's one of the questions I'm going to ask. But we're not there yet, but we are very close. And um, if you don't mind, what I would like to do is ask some questions, and then the applicants can make whatever um, uh, statement they want. But I would like to ask some questions to get on the record so that you have a full record on which to make your decision today. Uh, Okay, uh, let me open. To, I'm going to open up the yes. I'm going to open up the test, public uh, testimony portion now, and I'd like to have the applicant come forward. And uh, go ahead, Mr. Spotty. Uh, uh, please give us your name and address first before the record. Good morning, um, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners Lyle Schleyer. I am um, president of Calgary Renewable Fuels and. Uh, uh, by extension, its affiliates, including the applicant here, uh, Pixley Biogas. Thank, thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Uh, Mr. Schleyer, first I want to thank you for your Herculean effort to try to get us to this stage. I know this has been a very controversial project, and I know your cooperation, your good faith were critical to get us to this stage. I just wanted to ask you for the record, is it uh, the intention of Calgran Pixley Biogas to move the digester to the J.D. Haskell site? It is indeed. Okay. Could you just briefly tell us what remains to be done in order to consummate the transaction to facilitate the relocation? We have uh, J.D. High School's agreement to allow us to uh, utilize that site. Um, the form of that agreement, I believe you have a copy, is a letter of intent. Um, we have... Uh, we have long-standing relationship with J.D. High School. Um, this, uh, as we have explained to them, this, uh, this project uh, helps our viability. They don't want to see us go away. Um, they, um, uh, we were under the impression that this letter of intent in and of itself would be adequate. Um, and uh, just recently learned that, that there's a site control issue here. We're here to assert to the, uh, uh, to the commission that uh, uh, just as I responded affirmatively to uh, Mr. Spada's question, um, we intend to put the digester where we agreed to put it. And J.D. High School is very supportive of that. Um, we... Um, we will work toward a lease. There were uh, a couple very, there were some negotiating points that we had to work out with J.D. High School. They have been worked out. We don't have a lease document in hand yet, but um, that will be forthcoming. We're, um, uh, in effect, as was described to you by Mr. Bach, we're just swapping where the digester goes and where their current stormwater retention pond is. Uh, we were going to put the digester north of our ethanol site, and uh, their facility, including their stormwater retention pond, is at the northwest corner of their site, as you can see on the map, and therefore south of our ethanol plant. In effect, we're swapping them around. Uh, we've talked to um, CDI about this. Actually, this is a site that they recommended to us. And then it, what took a little while was to figure out where the pond ought to go. We readily agreed to put the digester there, subject to working things out with J.D. High School, which we have. Um, so now it's, uh, we've worked out the last pieces, and uh, I believe we are here with what... Uh, what constitutes a solution 
that satisfies, uh, um, well, if not virtually everyone, um, the large majority of the issues raised, and I believe it has CDI's support, their concern is the issue that Mr. Spada raised about site control. And uh, um, we understand that. They want, they want to see the digester go where we intend to build it. And uh, you certainly have, you have our promise and commitment that if you approve this project, that's where we're going to put the digester. We're not going to put it anyplace else. Mr. Schleier, um, what is your understanding with respect to CDI providing any funding to this transaction that would facilitate the relocation? Um, Mike Wyand and I have a sort of a handshake deal. It's not a contingency to what I've just committed to do, but what uh, um, Mike Wyand has said is that if we put the, the digester in this location, CDI understands that we have to relocate the existing stormwater retention pond, and they have agreed to reimburse us a fixed amount of money uh, as a contribution to those efforts. Um, Mike and I have, um, um, we're both comfortable with the state of that agreement. It is not a contingency for us going forward, um, but uh, when Mike sees adequate uh, uh, progress that he, he knows we're going to do what we said we're going to do, he's going to write us a check. Um, and it, it really, it, other than we mentioned it in the letter of intent because JD High School wanted to have some comfort level that this would solve the problem. They didn't want to, they didn't want us to swap the, the digester around and then find out that there were there was opposition. So a nice way to demonstrate the uh, strength of CDI's support was to include a paragraph that talked about what uh, CDI has said to date. Final question. In your judgment, how long would it take in order to wrap things up such that uh, Calgary or Pixley Biogas can acquire site control of the proposed relocation site? I believe we have site control now. In, I'm very confident with uh, what I have been told. Um, I don't have a lease document. I th think the question is a suggestion, how long will it take to get a lease in place? As you might see from the letter of intent, there's three, three documents that are going to be done together. We're going to lease J.D. High School property for the uh, relocated stormwater retention pond. We haven't sat down with them, and our, our engineer is here, um, Craig Hartman with Four Creeks. He's, he's uh, drawn up um, essentially a cartoon. He hasn't done all the balancing, the site balancing for the soil yet, but uh, uh, as we go along, he'll bring that to uh, um, JD High School so they know precisely what they're leasing. We'll work out all the access. We'll work out a, an easement to go across our property so that they, uh, we can essentially plumb their uh, uh, stormwater into the new pond. Um, I don't know how long that will take, but I think the answer that I would prefer to give is we have site control now. Uh, we are prepared to go forward. If you approve this project today, we're prepared to go forward with the project. And by the way, we've done quite a bit. What we've done on the project so far is to dewater J.D. High School's pond. We did all of this with their full knowledge, of course. We, uh, we put their stormwater pond into our stormwater pond. Uh, we needed to see what was, that, that pond has been there for a while. We needed to see what the muck layer was on the bottom so that we could do appropriate, again, Mr. Hartman can do appropriate uh, civil engineering to design the, uh, what sort of soils engineering has to go in. We've, uh, we punched the geotech, uh, done the geotech borings, um, and um, um, done site layouts. In other words, we're proceeding with this project. We would like to proceed with this project without delay 
The difficulty is, and I appreciate that there's some legal niceties here, but the difficulty is that we need, as we've talked about before, we need to have this project in operation in September. This is February, folks. We need to get going. And if we're just going to delay and delay and delay, um, then the project's going to fail because we can't get it done. Now, now our project engineer, uh, Daryl Moss, who you've heard from before, has, uh, um, I, I can't tell you all the emails going back and forth between he and uh, his contractor. Oh, this is so tight. This is so tight. We want to get going. We want to build a project. Um, we don't. We need to have all that civil engineering done so we can go to the county and get building permits. We don't have building permits yet. There's a lot to do on this project, and we're eager to do the project, but if we're just going to delay it, it doesn't make any sense. All right. Uh, as a result of the new information and the very valuable information, that you just articulated on the record. Let me ask um, uh, one final question. If the commission were inclined to approve this project today and approve it in the context of the relocation site as being the project site as a substitute for the original site, would that be acceptable to you as the applicant? Yes. Thank you. No further questions. Thank you, Hal. Yes. How long would the permit process take through the county, do you surmise? The permit process to which we are committed will be exercised at a supersonic rate of speed, as we have demonstrated with many, many other projects. We do not feel that will be difficulty at all with regard to the building permit process. Mr. Schleyer, what is the term of the lease to be? How long? It'll have to be at least 20 years. I think they're going to push for longer, and we're, we're agreeable to anything that's 20 years or more. What they, what they said to me is they'd like to make it as close to in perpetuity as they can. So I presume then there'll be uh, capacity provisions in the lease. Uh, do you, would you plan to long-term expand the, the capacity of that site? And if you did... Does that site have the capability of expansion? It's quite limited. Um, we could do some modest expansion, um, and we're going to lay it out so that we preserve that ability. But uh, in fact, um, we're we're not anticipating at the present time. So this will be a fixed output for twenty years. If it's a fixed output for 20, for 20 years, we would be comfortable with that. Thank you, Mr. Schleyer. Uh, for, uh, I'd like to have... Uh, rep oh, yes, ahead. Mr. Chairman, could I also have a representative of CDI and Council approach the podium, please, just for a few questions. Thank you. First, I want to thank and compliment you, Mr. White and Mr. Campbell, for the excellence with which you have conducted yourselves to get us to this point where I think we're almost there to get an approval that may be consistent with the expectations of everyone. However, I do have a few questions on the record that would help in, in deliberations. First, um, and, and it, we, yeah, uh, give okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Name and address, please. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mike Wyant, uh, CDI. 2000 Plaza Drive. Christopher Campbell, attorney with Baker Manick and Jensen, representing CDI, 5260 North Palm Avenue, Fresno. And it doesn't matter who answers. If council wants to take the lead, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, first, does CDI support the relocation of the digester to the J.D. Haskell site? Yes, we do. If that uh, relocation occurs, would CDI withdraw its objections to the environmental impact report as well as to the proposed project? Yes, we'd withdraw our 
objections to the project going forward. And the EIR? The, it, what do you, I'm not sure what you mean by withdrawing I'll, the objections I'll to the EIR. The if the commission today was to take action by approving the relocation site as the site for the digester yes. instead of the original site that has been ventilated to the EIR, would your client withdraw objections to the EIR on the project? Well, we wouldn't appeal if that's what you mean. Do, do, you, want, do you want a letter saying that the no, EIR was good? Right because that's important for them to know. Yes. That yeah. if we go through all this and you're right. still going to object, we'll go back to the original site. Right. I, well, I, I, was, I was just, <laughs> I wasn't understanding what you meant by withdraw. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. But no, the, the, the problem currently is that is that the uh, because of the lack of site control the way the uh, motion was prepared for and, and staff is doing this right uh, by the way I'm not criticizing the staff uh, procedurally the the motion was prepared to approve the existing site Correct. with the option to go to the to the uh, Second site, which I which I agree with everything Mr. Bach said that the second site is close enough that all the environmental impacts have been reviewed, et cetera, and all properly handled through CEQA. I agree with all of the preamble. Uh, so the so my question is: Is your proposal then to to modify after after the uh, commission takes action? Uh, shall we say, authorizing it, that you would then modify the, the motion or modify the, the approval documents to reflect that the, the uh, new site is the only site that's approved? That is correct. And procedurally and, and uh, substantively, uh, CDI, that's, that's all CDI is asking for. Okay, very good. I, I will, uh, and let, and let we me, would certainly me, commit to work with, work me, with you to work that out. Let me the clarify language. for the record what we would be recommending. And this is important because what we're doing right now is crystallizing the record based upon the unbelievable rate of speed that we've all been going at because it's important for the commission to know what we're going to be doing. Based upon the information from the applicant as well as from um, an interested party, it appears that the recommendation would be that now that um, Calgren is prepared to relocate to the J.D. Haskell site. There is no need for the original site and we would ask for direction by the Commission to appropriately amend the resolution to delete the original site as the site for their digester and the relocation site would now be the only site to which the digester would relocate. That would, that would be acceptable. In, in addition in terms of the approval uh, language. Un unfortunately, of course, the, this was continued for two weeks, but the two weeks really only means five working days in terms of getting the, in, you know, getting the, uh, for, the for the staff to, to get things rewritten and, and back to the, the commission on a timely basis. So, so since, since you the documents were prepared that you received last week, uh, Mr. Bach, Mr. Moss, and I have been working on on further revisions of the uh, some of the mitigation measures. The the uh, what is it the the oint, the odor mi <laughs> the odor, <laughs> the odor impact, impact minimization plan. Uh, so those those are all in process. And am, am I understanding correctly that that the recommendation of staff would be to continue finishing those up? As part of the uh, yes. part of the proposal, yes. F final question: um, Is CDI going to be preparing? Uh, um, is CDI going to fund in part this relocation to assist um, Calgren? Yes, we are, Lyle, uh, Mr. Lyle Slyer, and I have been working on that. CDI is committed to this. Uh, there isn't a written document yet, but I have a problem. Uh, preparing one. Our only concern at this point is site control and I know that uh, that Lyle and his group are working very diligently with yourselves but if something was to go wrong and they and this fell apart we don't want to see the digester slip back into the original proposed position. 
Correct, and I understand that uh, in terms of my colloquy with counsel, we would be making the appropriate recommendation that that would not occur. Therefore, are you reasonably confident that uh, your working with Lyle will result in a completed transaction to fund the research? Yes, given the proper time, yes. Very good. Thank you. I, I'm satisfied. We really appreciate uh, your good faith and, and your, your testimony. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Thank since you this guys. is a public hearing, Mr. Chairman, I would say proceed, exactly. and then uh, uh, staff would like to respectfully okay. make a recommendation. Is there anyone else would like to provide to testimony on this is issue today? May I, may I finish one more question? Sure. Uh, and so in terms of the revising the motion to, to uh, eliminate the existing site, uh, are you committing that that would be, you would run that by us to make sure that it, it, uh, it we're satisfied that it does what, what you've committed to do? Yes, but it would appear that this could be final action today. Right. No, I'm saying the revising, uh, revising the actual record we, uh, uh, after, the, after the commission as action. As part of the recommendation, I would say that also direct staff to make uh, uh, whatever minor technical amendments are necessary in order to fulfill the, the, the direction. So I think we got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioners. Okay. Anyone else like to provide testimony? Name and address, please, for the record. My name is Scott Cuny, 1830 th Street, uh, Bakersfield, California. I'm appearing on behalf of uh, one of the interested parties that has been involved in this proceeding for the entire time, that's 3R Land. Um, we are very encouraged uh, by the progress that has been made, not only earlier in the project modifications made by the project applicant, but by this most recent commitment to unequivocally provide that the digester will be relocated to the J.D. Haskell site without uh, conditions. Um, our remaining concern, though, and, and, and back in the subject of site control, is that there's two components with the digester. It's not just the physical digester itself, but because of the relocation, there's a displacement of the existing retention pond, and that, too, has to be relocated in order for there to be uh, uh, this site to fully function. Um, and there has been uh, great progress in discussions in that regard, uh, and we're encouraged by that but it's still unresolved as to where the newly reconstructed detention pond uh, will go. Um, it has been uh, discussed, and there are, matter of fact, even discussions this afternoon, I understand, with uh, uh, an adjacent landowner, uh, the Cruz group, of a parcel to the south, south of J.D. Haskell. There's also been uh, conceivably a discussion of that the detention pond would actually go back to the original project site or alternatively even a third choice somewhere within J.D. Haskell's property itself. Um, because the project applicant does not yet have site control with regard to that feature, progress being made but not yet resolved, we would request that this uh, unconditional condition that the digester be moved south also be inclusive that no uh, detention pond go back onto the original project site, uh, the Pixley Biogas project site. Um, and with that, we, we are very encouraged, again, and supportive of county staff and this commission and the applicant in making all of the uh, uh, changes that they've done in order to make this a suitable project. But that feature uh, is still uh, yet unresolved progress made but not yet resolved. So we would suggest that that feature likewise be unequivocally addressed as uh, there be no uh, detention pond on the original site whatsoever. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to ask Mr. Schleyer a question, please, about Sure, sure, go ahead. But, uh, Thank you. But Mr. Cuny, just before Mr. Schleyer comes up. Yes. Uh, now, what is your client's objection to having that pond at the location that everybody seems to, to be wanting at this point in time? That pond is proximate to an existing railroad easement held by our client. 
Um, and that pond, of course, we, we don't know, none of us yet know exactly what's been going into the pond and what would be going into the pond, but it's primarily a water quality issue and also uh, an issue in terms of a pre-existing railroad easement that is in that vicinity. Um, and we would, our preference would be, of course, that this new pond be properly constructed, permitted, and located uh, at the cruise site, and I know that that's being uh, discussed, and also, or alternatively, another site on J.D. Haskell's property, uh, but that it not be located uh, in the north, which is close to the 3R land uh, property, which is uh, planned for food processing uh, facilities. That's, that's the concern. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to ask uh, Mr. Schleyer the question about the location of the pond. Mr. Schleyer, you've heard the testimony of the representative for 3R development. Uh, what is your present understanding as to where that detention pond is going to be located as part of your project? Um, on or very near to where the original digester would have gone. It, as, I, as I testified earlier, it's essentially just a swap of those two locations. Uh, there, if I may, there, there have been discussions with Mr. Cruz, who owns the, the land south of J.D. High School. Uh, as, uh, by the way, Mr. Spada referred to our uh, Herculean efforts. I think it's his Herculean efforts. But one of, uh, one of the things we did was approach Mr. Cruz, and he has said no to date. That doesn't mean he's going to say no ultimately, but he has said no to date. So I couldn't possibly give you the wrong, I couldn't leave you with the impression that that is currently a viable option. It is not. We have asked uh, JD High School whether they would uh, consider expanding one of their current uh, stormwater retention ponds, the one we're moving isn't their only one, uh, so they could keep it on their site. And they have emphatically said no to that. So that's the the other option that Mr. Uh, um, Cooney, I think I'm pronouncing his name correctly, uh, mentioned. So what we're really talking about is it would be on Calgren's property. Uh, we have site control for that, and it will be, uh, we, we are aware of the uh, rail easement that uh, Mr. Cooney mentions, and it, uh, we have drawn it up, Mr. Hartman could testify, We've drawn it up so that it does not impinge on where, uh, where Mr. Friend says uh, his rail would have to go if he were to construct it. So I believe we've covered all of those issues other than the environmental one, which uh, um, it will certainly be permitted by the county. Thank you, Mr. Schleyer. We're trying to pin this down today so that hopefully the commission could take final action. Therefore, I understand what you've just said, that the detention bond pond, rather, uh, would be swapped or located on the original digester site. Would you want the option, however, to locate that pond on the cruise site? If we could do so without incurring delays, I would like to have that option if it was acceptable to all parties. Um, Mr. Cruz has not while he has said no to date, it wasn't an emphatic absolute no, and he agreed to meet with his folks to consider. That, has, that, that deal has a lot of moving parts, just so everyone's aware. That is not something I could commit to do right away. I can commit to do everything that involves our, our property, and based upon my discussions with J.D. High School, what they have told me that they would do. If we start to bring third parties in, I have difficulty with timelines. I can't so, commit to that. So what you're saying, Mr. Schleyer, as you stand here today, after being fully informed as to the possible relocation to the cruise site, the relocation is unforeseeable at this time. That's correct. Thank you very much. No further questions. Okay. Do we have any more testimony? <clears throat> Seeing none, I'll close the public testimony portion. Uh, turn it back over to staff, Mr. Spada. I, <clears throat> I just, I've got a statement or a question here. I'm a little bit confused. Uh, it has to do with the site control issue on this thing, and this is an important part of CEQA and, and the EIR. And as a real estate broker, I know that a letter of intent is not site control. 
whether I don't care what people say, it's not site control. It's an intent to control site, but be that as it may. Um, EIRs uh, are like, like your tax returns. All legal documents work until you're challenged, right? All your tax returns work until you're audited. <laughs> so so uh, uh, my problem here is we've got two people, two parties that are in agreement to uh, come to a, a decision today on uh, a promise and a handshake that we're going to get site control even though we don't have it today. But then we have a third party that says we might, I'm going to challenge because that is an issue and I don't like what the, the position or the, the, the agreement that you guys have. And um, I'm not comfortable uh, moving forward on a, a situation when we're exposed with that kind of an issue. I think your comments are very appropriate, but I think I can uh, make an effort to respond in such a way to remove any, any concern. But before I do that, I would like briefly Mr. Bach to put onto the record as to the propriety of locating the detention pond on the original site where the digester was located. Um, yes, for the record, uh, we did talk to the Regional Water Quality Control Board and we have talked to public works staff and the pond is such that it is size less than an acre. So therefore it falls under our MS4 permit as a detention basin. And uh, as I stated before, they could make that decision to relocate that pond on a ministerial level. Um, <clears throat> as far as the con constituents or any uh, pollution matters, again, that would be covered under a SWIP permit, also approved by uh, at a local level. So therefore, under CEQA, moving the detention basin does not require any further analysis under CEQA. And could you tell us who would be approving the MS-4 and the SWIP and, well, and articulate what those, for the record, what those <clears throat> permits are? The, the MS-4 permit basically delegates authority from the Regional Water Quality Control Board to the local agency to over, oversee their, their SWIP uh, permits and their detention basins. So um, <clears throat> as far as the SWIPs as well, it's also delegated, if it's less than an acre, to the um, local authority. Uh, and so, uh, as I stated, that, that falls totally within the county's purview um, as far as detention basin and as far as uh, any um, storm water uh, runoff. So as long as those plans are submitted into the record by the applicant uh, through the construction process, um, we are well covered. The MS-4 permit itself is something we already have as a county, and uh, so it's nothing that the applicant has to do, so that, that's already been pretty, pretty well established. Um, so like I said, the Regional Water Quality Control Board has stated to us that it doesn't require any further permits with, the, with them. Anybody? So the, the water quality issue then has been addressed. Uh, that was brought, brought up in testimony. Is that That's is that correct. Okay. All and, right. Uh, if I could add one more thing, as far as the rail, um, I think that's something that can be designed around as far as the uh, uh, stub that uh, 3R Land is concerned about. Uh, it's been fully addressed in the EIR. Uh, it's been designed around in the project, and I'm certain it could be designed around, and has been stated in the record that it could be designed around um, for the uh, detention basin. Let me respond to the, the commissioner's uh, uh, other point before Commissioner Milley's uh, moves forward. Um, you are correct. As a, uh, an astute expert in the real estate field, Mr. Mr. Chairman, a letter of intent is not an agreement. However, in addition to the letter of intent, and, and this is really one reason for my desire to ask questions today, you have received additional information on the record such that a representative, a key representative of Calgren has stated on the record that he is reasonably confident or sufficient that uh, the applicant has acquired site control. And based on that representation, then following the public hearing being closed, I'm inclined to make a recommendation that, um, that the project be approved in such a way that the digester would be located on the J.D. Haskell site and that the detention pond be located originally where the digester would be located. So, and with the direction of staff to clean up the resolution to reflect your, your decision, and I think we got it. But I think uh, at the staff level, we're reasonably confident that you've received information in addition to the letter of intent 
such that we are confident that site control will materialize. Okay. Go ahead. So, uh, Mr. Spada, then the, the, the statement in the letter of intent that says upon a termination of the leases, the retention pond will be relocated to the third party's uh, concern about uh, moving it back to its original location. What do we do about that statement? In this I, I'm sorry, could you direct me to the paragraph in paragraph, the Paragraph uh, three, uh, bottom uh, last sentence, upon termination of the leases, the retention pond will be relocated at Calgary's expense to the original location or to an alternative location acceptable to J.D. Haskell. Well. Uh, so does that just fall out in this? We would say that is superfluous because okay. they would have to come back to the county and amend the resolution, go through CEQA, and go through the grinding just process didn't want to again. Have a booby so they can say whatever they want. We have regulatory control over any relocation. All right. Okay. Any other questions? No. Is there anyone else that would like to perhaps testify or make a further comment as to whether there's any objection to what we're going to be doing here? Okay, I guess we're all ready to, uh, any further discussion here on the commission level? Uh, any questions? I guess we're ready for recommendation. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd like to make the recommendation where there would be two motions. Number one, to certify and adopt the final environmental impact report as being adequate and in compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act CEQA and the state CEQA guidelines, adopt the CEQA findings, and adopt the mitigation monitoring and reporting program for special use permit number PSP 10-060-PSR with the further clarification that the resolution would reflect that the only site on which the digester would be located would be the J.D. Haskell site and not the original site. In addition, the detention pond would be located um, on the original site of the digester or on Calgren's property. And finally, that you direct staff to make appropriate cleanup amendments to the, um, to the resolution that would allow this project to move forward. Secondly, to conditionally approve special use permit number PSP 10-060, 10, 10 subject to site control and other modifications as discussed, and adopt the resolution establishing findings and conditions of approval for the project. And again, whatever amendatory language would be necessary to, uh, in the special use permit in terms of condition of approval to enable the alternative site to become the project site and the original site to become the detention ponding site we would ask that you give us that direction as well so that final action can be taken today. That would be our recommendation. Okay. Turn it back to the commission. Uh, there's the recommendation. Uh, we've got two actions. The first one is just going to be is to certify and adopt the EIR. Yes. First action. I'll, I'll make the motion that we certify uh, item one of the two motions uh, mm -hmm. to adopt the final environmental impact report. Uh, as being adequate, uh, and this is all for uh, PSP 10-060-PSR. Second that I'll second. Okay. We got a second. Um, got that, Velma? Yes. Roll call. Song? Yes. Millies? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Oh, I'm sorry, he's gone. <clears throat> Norman? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Okay, the second action is to uh, conditionally approve the special use permit number PSP 10-060, subject to the site controls and uh, to the amendments that Mr. Spada had, has mentioned earlier. So Take do I? And we approve the special use permit number PSP 10-060. With, with, with the uh, addition and amendments mentioned by Mr. Spada? That is correct. Okay. I would second that. Roll call. Gong? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Norman? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Okay, the motion is passed. Thank you, gentlemen. I do want to say, uh, I want to thank all the participants and all uh, on this thing, because this was, uh, we had the first site teed up, ready to go, and uh, you guys uh, really uh, came to, to the, the game here, and, and I want to thank you very much for the effort that went in there, and I'm, I'm hoping everybody's satisfied here, 
and that we can have a, a nice business and, and generate some jobs and uh, help the environment a little bit too. So thank you, gentlemen. Okay, let's move on and we've got item number five, the director's report, planning director's update is 5A. With great pleasure, Mr. Chairman, um, I wanna say thank you to each and every one of you as the commission to participate in a very important project. We're trying to really start the digester business to help greenhouse gases and other issues affecting the dairy industry. And so we worked very hard to try to get this project going. And I can't thank you enough because you've really helped out Tulare County in the larger sense and in the future for taking this action today. And I have no further report. Thank you. All right, item six, uh, planning commission discussion for any items uh, and requests for future agenda. Right. Anything? Uh, this isn't a request for a future agenda item, but I just want to let everybody know we're going to do a um, CCPCA uh, special board meeting, and uh, it's going to be held in three of us, perhaps Gateway at their conference. And this is going to be on February 22nd. So if we nail this down in the time, I want to make that available to all of you to participate in that luncheon and board meeting. And so I'll have some more information. What's the on day? That. February 22nd. It's a Saturday. Saturday. Okay. Just email us. Let us know. I'll let you all know. I just Thanks. wanted you to be aware of that in case anybody wants to attend. And it could be an interesting uh, get together and get more involved with CCPC. Talk about water. We're going to talk about water. <laughs> We're going to talk about a lot of good yeah. things. Okay. By then, we hope to have some. It would be yeah, a good follow-up from, nice. from the from uh, the San Jose meeting, right? Right. Okay. Any anything else? <clears throat> All right. We'll adjourn this meeting and reconvene on what February twenty-sixth. Oh, you're the best. That new chairman. He's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's stellar.